Alright, this is going to be your first video for our new unit. We are going to look at some lines and angles. The first set of lines that we're going to look at are parallel lines. Parallel lines are lines in the same plane that never intersect. And you've probably heard of parallel lines before. This is something that's new, or not new to you, but we do have some additional information that maybe you're not as familiar with. Now that we have moved past our unit one, we know what a plane is, and parallel lines have to be in the same plane. Those parallel lines are never going to touch because they are going the same direction in that same plane. When we have parallel lines, if I have line A and line B, I mark them as parallel with an additional arrow. It could be an arrow like this. It could be a solid arrow like this. So when you're looking at diagrams, it's important that you look at the notation on the diagrams to see whether or not your lines are going to be parallel. Now when I go to write this, I say that line A is parallel to line B, and that is going to be your parallel symbol when writing that two lines are going to be parallel. Perpendicular lines are lines that once again are in the same plane. Lines in the same plane. And these are going to intersect. They're going to intersect to form right angles. So any two lines in the same plane that come together to form those right angles that we've looked at before, those are formed by perpendicular lines. So two lines coming together to give us that right angle. Here's line A, here's line B. It's a line, it continues forever and ever. And for this notation, I would write that line A is perpendicular to line B. So that's your perpendicular notation. That's how you write two lines are parallel. That's how you write two lines are going to be perpendicular to each other. The one that you may not be as familiar with or never heard about before are skew lines. Skew lines are lines in different planes. Those lines that are in different planes that never intersect. So very similar to parallel. The only difference between parallel lines and skew lines is that parallel lines never intersect in the same plane. Skew lines never intersect in different planes. Our diagram, though, is going to look much different. In order to show skew lines, I have to draw a three-dimensional picture. So the easiest way to do this is to draw a cube. You draw one square, draw an overlapping square, connect all of your corners. It's the easiest way for you guys to go ahead and draw a cube. Now they are in different planes and that's why I need that three dimensional picture. To show that they are skew, I'm going to pick two lines on different planes, but they can't go the same direction. If they're going the same direction, they're going to be parallel. So the way that I can get two lines to never touch and go in different directions. So notice how this one's going front to back and this one's going side to side. Because they're in different planes, they're never going to intersect, but they're not going the same direction. If they were going the same direction, those would be parallel lines. So it's really kind of difficult and you want to pay attention to the difference between those skew and those parallel. So just remember and make note that you need a three-dimensional figure to show skew lines. So in a quiz or a test, if I ask you to draw skew lines, you know that you have to have a three-dimensional picture. Let's go ahead and review this. Identify each pair of segments as parallel, perpendicular, or skew. So we start with segment FO and EF. I see that FO and EF, they're coming together to form that right angle, so that's going to make these perpendicular lines. Then we look at AV and ER. Here's AV 
and ER. Now, they're going different directions, but they're never going to touch, which means AV and ER are two lines that will never touch in two different planes, which makes those skew lines. And last, we have VI and AR. When we have two lines that are going that same direction and never touching, those two lines are going to be parallel lines. All right, let's go ahead and flip over to the back side. This is the heart of this chapter, talking about where we can go with these two lines. And there's a special line called a transversal. A transversal is a line that intersects two or more lines. So as we look to our diagram over here, we have many different kinds of transversals. A is a transversal because it cuts through C and D. B is a transversal because it cuts through C and D. C is a transversal because it cuts between A and B, and D cuts between A and B as well. So any line that's cutting through two or more. We have these different special angle pairs that are created from these transversals. The first one is alternate interior angles. We want to think about those words. Alternate means opposite sides, interior inside, with line A and C. So let's look first when A is our transversal. When A is the transversal, it's cutting through line C and line D. If I'm looking for alternate interior, these are my angles in between the two lines, alternate sides of the transversal. So we would have for line A, angle 5 and angle 10. The other two, alternate interior, would be angle 6 and angle 9. Let's now look at line B. Oh, nope, we want line C. So if we're looking at line C as our transversal, we're no longer looking at this. We want the line to cut through line C right here. So if line C is the transversal, it's cutting through A and B. Go ahead and pause the video and try to write down what you think are the two alternate interior angles. All right, let's see how you did. Alternate sides of the transversal, interior, so 2 and 7, or 6 and 3. So we've got two words that we have to consider when we pick those. Alternate, opposite sides of the transversal, interior, between the two lines that you're cutting through. Then we have alternate exterior, lines B and D are the transversals. So alternate exterior. Let's think about, again, those words. If I want alternate exterior, we look at our first one, line B. So if I want line B to be my transversal, that's the line that cuts through C and D. So I'm only concentrating on these angles right here. I'm looking for them to cut through alternate, so just like last time, opposite sides, but I want exterior. In between the two lines is the interior, so alternate exterior. One's on the left-hand side, one's on the right-hand side, but they're on the outsides of the lines I'm cutting through. So for line B, we are looking at angle 3 and angle 16. The other alternate exterior angles would be angle 4 and angle 15. The next one we want to look at is line D as the transversal. So if I choose to switch gears here and have line D be my transversal, it's cutting through line A and line B. I'm ignoring everything else on my diagram except for those two. Go ahead and we're going to press pause and we're going to see if you can guess the two sets of alternate exterior angles.
when line D is the transversal, alternate exterior would be 9 and 16, 13 and 12. All right, let's move on to our next special angle set. This time we are looking at same side interior. Same side, so we're no longer alternating the sides of the transversal. It's on the same side of the transversal, and we want the interior angles. So we're going to first look at when we have line A as the transversal. Line A is the transversal. It's cutting through C and D, which means we're only concentrating on these eight angles. We want same side interior. So again, up here, down here is the exterior. In the middle right here, sandwiched between those two lines that we're cutting through, that's the interior. So if I went same side, the two angles that are on the same side are five and nine. So when line A is our transversal, we are looking at angle five and angle nine to fit that. The other two that are on the same side of the transversal but interior are angle six and angle 10. All right, let's go ahead and switch to transversal C. So now my concentration is when C is the transversal, C is cutting through A and B, which means I'm only looking at these. Go ahead, we're gonna press pause, and you're going to write down the two sets of angles that are same side interior when line C is the transversal. Okay, interior, we're looking sandwiched in between here, two and three, angle two and angle three. Same side of the transversal, interior between the two lines that are cutting through. And six and seven. Now our next one, very similar, but this time we want same side exterior. So we're doing the same side of the transversal like we did with same side interior, but now instead of interior angles, we want exterior. So we're looking for line B to be the transversal. This is my line cutting through. It's cutting through C and D. So I'm only concentrating on these eight angles. Same side of the transversal and exterior. So exterior, the angles on top, angles on the bottom, not the angles in between. That would be interior. So same side of the transversal for line B would be 3 and 15 and 4 and 16. When we switch gears, now we have transversal D. And when line D is the transversal, we're cutting through line A and we're cutting through line B, which means we're only looking at these eight angles. We're gonna press pause and you're gonna write down the two sets of angles that are same side exterior when line D is the transversal. All right, again, inside of here, this is interior. We're looking at exterior angles, same side of the transversal. Nine and 12 are both on top. 13 and 16 are both on the bottom. Next set are corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are angles that are in the same position on the other line. So if we're looking for line A as our transversal, here we go, line A being our transversal, cutting through line C, in line D. Corresponding means same position on the other line. So if I'm looking at one, one is left of the transversal above the line. I go to the other line down here, I went left of the transversal above the line. So my two corresponding angles would be angle one and angle nine. But notice I have four angles, so I have four corresponding sets. I have angle five and angle 13. They're both left and below. 
we have 2 and 10. They're both to the right and above. And then we have 6 and 14, both to the right and below. So corresponding angles are angles that are in the same location on the other line that you're cutting through. So when we go and switch to line C as our transversal, so here's line C, line C cuts through A and B. We're only comparing those eight angles. Go ahead and press pause and write down the four sets of corresponding angles when line C is the transversal. Okay, one and three. both left and above, two and four are both right and above, five and seven are both left or below the transversal and left of the lines there, five and seven, and last we've got six and eight. Can't really see that seven there. So corresponding angles are those angles that are in the same position on the other line. Now the last one are those that have no relationship. There's a ton of angles on this that have no relationship. For example, we've got 6 and 11. If I were to trace angle 6 like this, I would need those two lines. If I were to trace angle 11, I would need those two lines. They do not share a transversal. There's not a line cutting through them. So those that have none, like six and angle 11, are angles on different transversals. So you have one line that cuts through two. You are concentrating only on those. When you have lines that don't share a transversal, then they don't have a special relationship. They're not alternate interior or alternate exterior, same side interior, same side exterior, or corresponding. All right, that's going to finish it up for this video. This is a very important video. This is one that I would want you to go back and watch a couple of times to have these relationships down. These special relationships are gonna be the concentration of the entire unit.